Good morning. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Kevin McReynolds. It's my pleasure to be able to welcome both our guests and visitors and our members alike for today's worship service. Today is the third Sunday in Advent. You can see that by the number of candles lit up here. And it is Gaudet Sunday, uh, which is the Latin for rejoice. So uh, in honor of Gaudet Sunday and our ability to rejoice in the Lord today, we're going to do the hokey pokey. And if you don't believe me, hang tight, because we will. Um, it also means that there are two weeks to, uh, to uh, Christmas Day. So two weeks from today is Christmas Day. So if you don't have your Christmas shopping done, I suppose there's still a little time. And uh, I got the warning from Amazon.com. They said, um, if you don't get it done now, you're not going to get it before Christmas. So the warning is good for all of us. Um, it is, as, it, as I said, my pleasure to welcome you here to worship today and to be able to share with you the gifts that the Lord chooses to give through his word, and that gift is the gift of faith that works righteousness in us. So I pray that uh, today's service, um, even though we are doing the hokey pokey, just be glad we're not doing the limbo. All right, we'll do the hokey pokey today, and you'll see what I mean when we get to the sermon on that one. Um, we're going to go ahead and dive into worship today, and we will begin with our opening hymn, number 575, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. We sing. <laughs> I invite the congregation to please rise for worship. You're welcome to follow along on the screens, or if you'd like to follow along using your hymnal, you'll find today's service is Divine Service Setting 3, found on page 184 in the front of your hymnal. We make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The service continues with the intro it appointed for today. We speak these words responsively. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. We omit the glory and excelsis for the season of Lent and continue with the salutation and collect of the day. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Testament reading for today is from the book of Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and bloom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. 
Shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy? For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up to it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from James chapter 5, verses 7 through 11. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to please rise as we sing the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I will send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We now have the opportunity to confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn number 345. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you all from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's sermon is the gospel lesson you heard read just a moment ago. Please be seated. It's been uh, several years since I've been to the roller skating rink. I understand roller skating is uh, experiencing something of a renaissance now. You see people on skates again and People perhaps on the nostalgia wave for days gone by are heading back to the roller rinks. They're dancing as they skate, you know. Oh, I look, I dropped something here. How about that? Better hang on to that. That happens when you're dancing from the altar over to the pulpit, right? They're dancing as they skate, the couples skate. I always remember one of my first couple skates with a girl named Tana Lucas, and she had a fuzzy sweater, and we did the couple skate, and I could not skate backwards, but she could. And I got to put my hands on her waist and skate with her backwards. <laughs> we did it. They're doing the limbo rock, as I said at the beginning of service. We won't do that today. They're doing line dances at the skating rinks, but they're also doing the hokey pokey, right? You guys know it? You put your right arm in, you put your right arm out, you put your right arm in, and then you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Okay, you know. Good. Been to a roller skating rink lately, have ya? Okay, my dad broke out all of his front teeth at the roller skating rink, so. Yeah. Even if you've never been to a roller skating rink, I think you know this one. And whether you knew it before today or not, I want you to understand that at the heart of this silly little thing that we did, whether at the roller skating rink or a wedding dance or whatever, we can find some important theological truths in this silly little song. We find the intersection of these truths in this familiar passage from St. Matthew chapter 11 today in our gospel reading. There you hear the story of John the Baptist. I'll make my other little joke that I have to make every time. You know John was not a Baptist, John was a Lutheran and he was in prison. 
And if you know the backstory of this, which you actually don't get until later in Matthew's Gospel, you'll remember that John was imprisoned for a reason. And it goes back to the beginning of John's mission in Matthew's Gospel. You know he was in the wilderness, not in soft clothing as you heard Jesus say. He was in camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And he was snacking on locusts and wild honey, and it sounds like something I don't plan to do anytime soon. Maybe the honey is okay, but I'll pass on the locusts. We know that his purpose was to prepare the way of the Lord for the coming Christ. This is back to Matthew 3, verse 1. And in fulfilling this purpose, he preached a sermon that called people to turn. Metanoeo is the Greek word for it. Turn away. This was the sermon in Matthew 3, verse 2. Repent. Metanoel. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent meaning turn. One of the people that John the Baptist called to repentance was King Herod himself. And this account is found in Matthew 14. That's where I said we're skipping around a little bit to get ourselves some context but it says there that Herod the Tetrarch had John thrown in prison for having his brother Philip's wife. Though it is unsaid in the scriptures directly, we can surmise that John had called King Herod himself out for his sin of adultery, the sixth commandment. And Herod clearly was not happy about it. Who is this that would presume to tell the king what he can do and what he cannot do. You could almost hear Herod responding to John. But John would go undeterred in his purpose. He would preach a message of repentance and he would call people, you guessed it, to do the hokey pokey. To turn yourself about, because that's what it's all about, right? Turn, King Herod. Turn away from your sinful ways. Turn away from your adulterous ways with having your brother's wife and turn towards your God who is at hand. Turn away from your sin and turn towards God's righteousness. Just this last Wednesday during our midweek Advent services, I told the congregation, congratulations. You just heard the same sermon that's been preached throughout the centuries and there is one example of it. The Old Testament is filled with examples like this. The Hebrew word in the Old Testament is shuv. It means the exact same thing as the New Testament word metanoeo that I've used already with you. Both words, an allusion in my way of putting it today, to the hokey pokey. Turn. Turn yourself around. Because that's what it's all about to be a Christian to be a believer in the coming Christ. From the prophets of old, from Moses to Elijah to Isaiah to Malachi, I'm seeing if you're paying attention, Malachi. All right, we're, we're still with us. All the Old Testament prophets had a consistent message. Shuv, shuv, turn, turn away from your sins. Turn towards the kingdom of heaven and it's Christ. Similarly, this message carried on and throughout the New Testament as we see John preparing the way for Jesus in his message, which put him at odds with King Herod and landed him in the clink. Jesus, for his part, now on scene, preaches the same sermon at the outset of his public ministry. This in Matthew 4, verse 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, what do you think he said? You're going to say turn, but I'm going to say, do the hokey pokey. Jesus said, metanoeo, turn, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So folks, rather than be discouraged that Pastor McReynolds continues in the tradition of preaching this same sermon, hear the words of the Lord that have been spoken throughout the ages and down even to today and here in this age-old sermon. You're in good company for being the hearers of it because the Lord is revealing to you his word 
and he is indeed consistent. This Greek word, repent, metanoeo, that you've heard me teach, means literally to turn around, which is what God's people do. So if you're doing something and you're going in this direction, if you're entering into sin or already sinning, then to turn around means to turn and go the other way. So think, put your right arm in, you put your right arm out. You put your right arm in, and then you shake it all about. Because sometimes it does take a little shaking to get things working the right way. You do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around. Turn around and stop sinning, because that's what it's all about. St. Paul sort of captures this in my way of casting it this morning in Romans chapter 7, one of my favorite sections of Scripture, the book of Romans. In chapter 7, starting at verse 15, he says, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. What he's talking about is sinning. What he wants to do is to not sin, but what he does is he sins, and he doesn't want to do it. In his spirit and in his mind, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, he wants to stop sinning, but he can't. I do the very thing that I hate, he says. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it's good because I don't want to do the law. And if I do what I don't want to do, which is the law, then I hate it. My flesh hates it anyway. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh, for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it about. And that's that turning about and shaking it all about in your life that Paul is alluding to here. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil that I do not want is what I keep on doing. The Lord, through his prophets, through his Christ, through his pastors down to today, calls us to turn from the ways that our sinful flesh would want us to go and to turn instead to the direction that God leads us in his word and guides us through his commands. You do the hokey pokey. You turn yourself around because that's what it's all about in the scriptures. But here also, Paul teaches that this is a continual effort. It's one that has to go on. It's one that you may do well one day, but do poorly the next day. And we find in it this struggle in the flesh against God's spirit. So we turn around. We turn around in repentance, but then some days we turn back to our sin. And then we turn around again, called out from our sins. Repentance is one way that the hokey pokey is evident in today's gospel reading. But there's another place that you'll see the hokey pokey in the text. Remember I said there's several connections. Remember John is in prison. Remember he was put there by King Herod for calling on King Herod to do the hokey pokey in my way of putting it. But note, surprisingly, we find that John himself is doing the hokey pokey as well. Because prior to this time, John has been doing his job. He's been calling people to repentance, to do the hokey pokey, to turn around, to turn from their sins and to make way for the coming Christ. But if you look closely at the text, you'll see that John takes a turn for the worse, perhaps. There in prison, he does the hokey pokey. He turns himself around, maybe in his prison cell, in the wrong way by questioning if Jesus is who he says he is. Listen to verses 2 and 3. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? Are you the Christ? Are you the Christ? John asks Jesus, by way of his disciples, hadn't John been the one sent to prepare the way for the same Jesus? Matthew seemed to think so. Jesus in our text today seems to think so. He says, he's the one about whom it is written. He shall prepare the way. He's Elijah, Jesus says in the text. Jesus says, John is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight 
his paths. And this when John was a grown man. If you do a little bit of biblical research, you'll easily remember that John's connection to Jesus goes way back. In Luke chapter 1, verse 41, the Bible teaches that when Elizabeth, John's mother, was greeted by Mary, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know the one in Elizabeth's womb was John. In Luke 1, 57, we learn that Elizabeth gives birth to a son, and her husband Zechariah, who had been a priest serving in the temple, who had been struck mute at the hearing of the fact that he and his wife would have a child together in their old age, wrote on a tablet, his name is John, in Luke 1.63. This child that was in Elizabeth's womb was John and leapt in the presence of Jesus and was, as we understand, related to Jesus as such. John had been acquainted with Jesus from a very early age, even on into adulthood. His whole life he knew who Jesus was. So how do you explain this sudden hokey pokey that he does in his prison cell? He does the hokey pokey and he turns himself around. Are you the Christ? Are you the one who is to come or should we expect another? Why the sudden turnaround, John? I've asked this question of my pastors and teachers in the past. Here's what they've told me. It's one of two reasons. The first, which I'd never thought of on my own, was who says John was asking for his own purposes? Of course he knew Jesus from an early age, from before he was even born to the time that he was an adult, as if he questions who Jesus is and is he the Christ. And this answer is indeed plausible. But you can't miss the fact that Jesus sends, or excuse me, John sends his disciples to ask this question. And so the answer that was given to me was, who says that John was asking for his own good? Maybe what he was doing was to get his disciples to turn away from John and towards Jesus. Maybe John was trying to get his disciples to do the hokey pokey and to stop looking to him as their teacher and leader and start looking to Jesus. I must decrease, he must increase. <clears throat> sounds pretty good, sounds plausible. But remember I told you that they gave me two answers to this and I personally like the second explanation better because to me it seems a little more relatable. The first one lets John off the hook, doesn't it? John's doing this out of his piety to send his disciples to decrease and let Jesus increase. But this second way is to talk about John from a standpoint that makes him relatable to us. Because remember, he's behind bars. He's suffering for the sake of Jesus, for calling people to repentance. See, John was in prison and suffering, and he's preparing the way for the coming Jesus, and he'd been preaching to people they'd better do the hokey pokey and turn themselves around, and it landed him in prison. Now, wait just a minute. If he's really a king, then why am I in prison? You can just imagine John thinking. If he's the long-expected, triumphant king that I've been preparing the way for, and I'm second only to him in terms of the kingdom, then why am I rotting here in this jail cell? Oh yeah, I can relate to this John. This John who does the hokey pokey and questions when times get tough, when the rubber hits the road in my own personal life and I start to suffer and I myself do the hokey pokey and I turn away and I say, really, is this what you've got in mind, Lord? Is this how it's gonna go for me? You said you'd never leave me or forsake me. How could you hang me out with this problem or that problem? Fill in the blank. <clears throat> yeah, I get this, John. I get this, John, who does the hokey pokey on Jesus. And I would be willing to bet that maybe you do too. So listen to the answer that Jesus gives John's disciples from the text. And I want you to listen closely because in it, there's another hokey pokey, if you're paying attention. 
Jesus says, John, do the hokey pokey. Turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Jesus sends word back to this suffering prisoner, John, the word of the hokey pokey, verses 4 to 6. Jesus answered, go, tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor, they have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. <coughs> Jesus tells John the hokey pokey has been done. What's been turned around? Everything. Everything's been turned around. Blind people? Do the hokey pokey. Turn yourself around. They see. The lame? Do the hokey pokey. Now they walk. They turn around. They do the opposite. The lepers? Hokey pokey. They're cleansed. The deaf? Hokey pokey. They hear. The dead? Hokey pokey. They're raised. Are you the poor one in prison, John? Hokey pokey. Hear that word. Turn yourself around. Remember who I am that you've come to share this good news with. You are the poor in your state there in prison. I had to pick up my bulletin off the floor because another one dawned on me as I was listening, it, listening to it be read. It's a fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, hokey pokey. The ears of the deaf unstopped, hokey pokey. The lame man, leaping like a deer, hokey pokey, doing the opposite. The tongue of the mute, singing for joy. Waters breaking forth in the wilderness. Streams in the desert. The burning sand becoming a pool. The thirsty ground, springs of water. Do you hear all these reversals? These hokey pokies? Do you know what made it possible? I bet you can guess by now. The hokey pokey made it possible. The hokey pokey made it possible because Jesus turned himself around. This righteous and holy king whose way was being prepared by John the Baptist, this hokey pokey was done on him. He was turned around as he was hung on the cross to be the bearer of sins of the whole world. Though he knew no sin, this king that we preach the same king that has been preached throughout the ages, whether it be a coming king from the Old Testament prophets to the king who has come for the people of Jesus' age to the king who has come and will come again in our age, this king was turned around. That's why Jesus came. He came to be turned around. That's what it's all about. That's why he had to be born of a woman, so that he was of the same flesh that you and I are. That's why he had to have the parentage of God the Father, so that he was able to do what he had been sent to do. Jesus came to give up his righteousness for his kingdom's subjects and to be turned around and become sin on behalf of his kingdom's subjects. My way of saying it this morning, you do the hokey pokey. And you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Remember a little bit ago I quoted from Romans chapter 7. Paul almost exhausts himself from being turned around and turned around and turned around. And I told you it's kind of that shake it all about business in the hokey pokey. Sometimes it's hard. The good that I want to do, that I don't do. The bad that I don't want to do, that's what I keep on doing. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Wretched man that I am, Paul says in Romans 7.24. But you know the answer. Hokey pokey. Hokey pokey. Jesus turns you around. Paul says as much in Romans 7.25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord told you there's a lot of good theology going on in the gospel reading from Matthew today, but I also told you there's a lot of good theology going on at the skating rink in the hokey pokey. I had to use a favorite jingle to share it with you all and to help you see it. But what I want is that you would not lose sight of this truth. 
that Jesus came to save sinners. St. Paul says, of whom I am the foremost in 1 Timothy 1.15, chief of sinners though I be, is the song that we sing on that one. And truth be told, you may, like Paul, believe this about yourself. Chief of sinners, though I be. Or you may think that you're all right. See, most people think that they are pretty good. That they don't do anything so bad that they would deserve God's eternal wrath and punishment. But if you... If you are the poor in spirit, if you, like Paul, think that you are chief of sinners, then hear that jingle. Hear that word that causes you to rejoice on a Sunday called Gaudet in Advent. That your Savior has come. He's done the hokey pokey for you. And you can do the hokey pokey now. And if you find yourself fretting over the fact that you're a sinner and your sin causes terror in you, just like it did for Paul, well, when the God comes in judgment, you've got to remember that the hokey pokey is done. You've been turned around. You've been turned around by Jesus. That's what it's all about. Yes, that's what it's all about. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, May it guard your hearts and your minds and keep you in faith in Jesus who has come and is coming again until life everlasting. Amen. I invite the congregation to please rise as we join together and sing the offertory. be seated as we collect our gifts and offerings to the Lord. Also at this time, a quick reminder that if you're a guest or visitor or a member alike, please fill out the membership cards or fellowship cards that you see located in the pew in front of you. Once you've filled out the card, please place it into the offering basket as it's passed down your aisle, and in that way we can properly acknowledge your presence with us in worship this morning. Thank you.
invite the congregation to please rise for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who offer their prayers and supplications, that God would hear them on account of his Son who has enlightened the darkness of our hearts and every corner of creation by his incarnation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For pastors and church workers, that the words they bear would prepare the way of Jesus' second advent and be received by all who hear them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the homes of our land, that God would grant safety and security to all families, and that the faith would be delivered from one generation to the next, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are in authority, that they would be given wisdom and insight until the day when Christ returns in glory to usher in his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick and grieving, especially those listed in our bulletin today and those we name before you in our hearts and minds, that as the day draws near when blind eyes will see and deaf ears will hear, lame legs will leap and mute tongues will sing for joy, that God would grant to each of them healing according to his gracious will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, your love invites us to rejoice in your goodness. In every circumstance of life, teach us the joy that comes from knowing your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and eagerly expecting his gracious visitation. We ask all these things through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord, thanks be to God. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated for our closing hymn number 349.
Once again, a warm welcome uh, to all of you, guests and visitors and members alike. It's been a pleasure to be able to share the word of the Lord with you today and to, to know that that word doesn't go out from the Lord's mouth and not accomplish the purpose for which it's been sent, but to know and to trust him at his word that it has indeed accomplished its intended effect, which is to turn the hearts of the sinful towards him and to make you into his kingdom, to take sinful people and make them righteous and holy and blessed in his eyes and in his name. Uh, I've debated about how I wanted to handle this, and I'm just going to say it from here, I think. Uh, last week, if you were with us, you know that we had um, a guest musician here, Wendy Sue Flugey, um, who was here with us. And uh, in the scuttlebutt that sort of happened in the aftermath of last week, I want to address um, what has come to my attention as uh, a rumor. And um, in a way, I want you to think about doing the hokey pokey on this one, if you would. Um, the rumor that was out there floating around was that she was brought in here for the purpose of doing an interview with her, which was not the case. And um, the rumor was passed on several different occasions by several different people and made it back. Um, it was exactly as I stood in front of you last week and shared with you. She is a church musician, a director of ministries of music, um, who's a graduate of Concordia Mequon. She had an engagement in Conway, Arkansas and was looking to fill her calendar with another church and happened upon us. And it just so happened that we were able to make use of her and have her come and give the congregation a little bit of an idea of what it could look like. Um, the plans, the way that the service went last week um, was planned um, by her and me together. Um, it's not exactly what we would maybe have in mind for that role here at this church. Um, that was another part that I'd heard kind of circulating. And um, what I would just caution you is remember the Eighth Commandment, that um, we shall not bear false witness. I'm not going to stand in front of you and tell you that she came to go to Conway and try and sneak it in and, you know, that she's here for an interview. Plus, we have a call committee that's here to do that duty. And the call committee didn't meet with her, so that should have put an answer to that, too. But it sort of reminded me that sometimes, you know, we think we have some information that we don't have, and information is power, and we like to share it. So... In a way, this is calling people to repentance, to turn away, to take things at face value. I've got no reason to, um, to try and uh, be you know, double-tongued with you with regard to this. Um, and I hope that, uh, that you understand why I'm sharing this with you now, um, is that I want to quell some of that stuff. This is, um, we're the Lord's people, we're the Lord's house, and we're meant to do these things um, in an upstanding way as he's called us to do them. So we're thankful that she was here. Um, I hope you enjoyed her time with us. Um, will she come back again? I have no idea. She's indicated that she and her husband at some point would love to retire to Arkansas because they enjoyed it just as much as you do and as much as I do. Uh, does that mean it'll be here? I hope we have somebody in place before the day of her retirement. <laughs> That's my thinking. So uh, uh, at any rate, um, I just wanted to clear that up and make sure that we understood that um, that, that was just a, it was a lucky thing that we stumbled upon and the Lord blessed us with her presence here to be able to sing with us last week. A um, couple of things about uh, what we've got yet ahead, um, because did you note I got us done a little bit early today? <laughs> Last week we ran a little bit long, so if I could just figure out how to do the balance between the two and get them both to equal out, that'd be great, but it's, uh, it's difficult when we have those communion Sundays. Giving envelopes for 2023 are um, out in the uh, Narthex area now. Please pick up your boxes and take them with you. Um, we had several that, uh, that lingered last year and stuck around here. I'd love to have everybody pick theirs up. Um, otherwise, maybe we'll have to adopt a new thing where we just call you forward in church to pick it up up at the altar. <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. I, I have to think about that one, and we'll see what happens with that. Um, we have several. This is another thing that I need to put out there that's not in the bulletin. We have several uh, new members that we're waiting to do, reception of new members here at the church. But... Just been waiting on some lingering paperwork on several and the opportunity to sit down and visit with a couple. Uh, unfortunately, just looking at the calendar and the weeks that we have ahead, I'm not going to get to be able to do that. Today was sort of my opportunity to do it, and this last week um, I was unable to get with about three different people, uh, three different family groups. So I'm going to ask those of you that um, you know who you are, those of you who are um, giving membership to the church here, to just hang tight with me. We're probably going to be until after the first of the year, because this other announcement I'll share with you next Sunday is our Christmas cantata. So the early service will be our Christmas cantata, cantata a celebration of the, of the gospel message of Christmas in music. 
um, with both the handbell choir and our church choir here presenting the gospel to us. Um, and then there'll be a reception um, after that following in the, in the fellowship hall. You're invited to bring some snacks or cookies so we can all just take a, a break for the reception in there. And then return back here to the sanctuary and have the Odyssey children share with us the same Christmas story as we see them bringing it up from very young ages um, and getting to uh, enjoy their presentation of the gospel. So I hope you'll plan to stay for both next week. It's a Sunday celebration, but you can see because of the way that it lays out, it's not a Sunday that we could uh, typically welcome new members into church. Then the next Sunday, as I shared with you at the beginning of service, is Christmas. And then the Sunday after that is New Year's Day. And for both of those services, we're only having one service a day. It will be at 10 o'clock on Christmas Day and 10 o'clock on New Year's Day. Both services will be services of the sacrament. Um, so you can sort of see we're, we're sort of in a holding pattern to do anything with receiving our members or new members. Doesn't mean anything um, except the fact that we just can't publicly recognize it. So um, please understand the circumstances with the timing and the holidays and, and what we're trying to do with that. Um, two last things. Uh, we have one more opportunity for midweek Advent um, preparatory services as we prepare our hearts for our coming King this coming Wednesday, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m., whichever is most convenient for you as we continue our study of some of um, Isaiah the prophets, um, more minor prophecies. I don't want to say minor prophecies, but more obscure texts may be um, more accurate with that. Um, and that will carry on into uh, our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. So if you've not been able to take part up to this point, I'd still encourage you, there's still time. Uh, please join us for worship this coming Wednesday. And uh, finally, between class or between services here today, um, we resume our adult Bible class, and we're talking about that day, the day that the Lord comes. We're on that topic. And um, we've been on the same slide for several weeks because we find ourselves kind of getting sidetracked on several questions that have come up in class, but today we move our way past the slide with the three main points on it. So um, if ever there was a day to show up in class, today is it. I hope to see you there. So we'll have you join us in class in the fellowship hall. I think there's some snacks and coffee in there. Uh, other than that, I think I'm all tapped out and I got us right up to the hour. So have a blessed day and week in the name of the Lord. Amen.